Hello Cal Kids, this is Mr. Bean from FlipMath.com. Today I'm going to walk you through how to do the 2022 free response questions from the AP Calculus exam. Now this first problem, number one, is both from the AB test as well as the BC test. So they had the same problem for number one, which is what happens most years on the AP exam. You'll have a few questions that are the same for both AB and BC. And if you want to look down in the descriptions, I'm going to put for part A, B, C, and D, which lessons they pertain to with links to those lessons in case you need to kind of brush up on how to do those types of problems. All right, so part A. We have here, sometimes what you really need to do is when you read these problems, I just kind of glance through it real quick, get a little bit of a gist of what's happening. From five to 10, the rate at which vehicles arrive at a certain toll plaza is, and then what I'm gonna do real quick is really pay attention to that word rate. That is an important word right there. Because what's that, what that's telling me is this is already a rate of change. So T is the number of hours after 5 a.m. A of T is measured in vehicles per hour. So it's important for me to get my units correct. Traffic is flo flowing smoothly at 5 a.m. with no vehicles waiting in line. All right, so we're going to write but not evaluate. So that's nice. It's going to speed things up. Do not evaluate. An integral expression that gives the total number of vehicles that arrive at the toll plaza from 6 to 10. Uh, we can probably assume here that the the rate is always positive. So sometimes students get thrown off with this word total and they think, oh, I've got to do the absolute value. You could, but if we graph this, you're going to see that it's always going to be positive, the rate. At least I should say always from t equals zero, from t equals zero to t equals five, the graph is going to be positive. Now we're only focused on from one to five. So the way we do that is we just go for the integral from one to five. So that's 6 a.m. to 5 a.m. And then instead of writing out this whole thing, which you could do, but let's save ourselves some time. We can just say a of t with respect to t. And that is the answer. I don't have the scoring guide to tell me exactly how many points this would be. My guess would be this is one or two points and that's it. Uh, so, cause I'm making this before the scoring guides were released. Uh, but if you wanted to see how to do more of those, you could look at lesson 8.3 for the calculus lessons on accumulation functions and how to deal with those in context. And just look at the video description down below underneath the video and you'll be able to see some links to these lessons. So that's for part A. Part B, now we're gonna look at the average value. So I see this keyword here, this key phrase average value, and we're looking for the average value of the rate. This is already the rate. And so what we're looking for is the average value of A of T on a specific interval. So how do we do that? This is where we do the integral from, we're gonna do from one to five again, of A of T with respect to T, so it's just like the last one, except for because we're doing average value, this is where you have the one over B minus A, which is one fourth or five minus one. So that's the, remember that that's B, I should write it up here, one over B minus A. That's what goes in front of the integral. That's what this is right here. Now we want to figure out the answer to this. And so we're gonna grab our calculator. And what I like to do in the calculator is I plug in what A of T is. I just plug it into the Y equals line. I know you might have different calculators, so you just have to play around with your own calculator to figure out how to do this. And so I'm going to take the integral by doing math nine on my TI-84. In fact, before that, let's because sometimes I make that mistake, I'm gonna start off with one divided by four. One divided by four. And then I'm timesing that by math nine. Okay, and the reason I do that, because sometimes I, I end up forgetting to divide by four at the very end of that, so it's good if you just set that up right away. So let me just plug this in real quick. And where is this? this I plug this into y1. So for on my calculator, I'm gonna hit the variables button, go over to my y variables. First one is function number one, y1. So there's my y1 with respect to x. And of course, I could, instead of doing y1, I could just plug in this entire thing here, 450 times sine of 0.62t. But it's nice if you know some of the shortcuts on your calculator to speed that process up. Oh, some of you were yelling at me through the computer. That's supposed to be a five. I said one to two, sorry, from one to five. And then we hit enter and we get 375.563. Let me bring this over here. So we can either truncate it or round it. So there's our answer, 375.536 or 537. And then we put vehicles per hour. Again, I don't have the exact points and breakdown of where they give you points, but my guess is they're giving you a point for setting up the integral as well as a point for this part here. Now, what is this lesson from? This is from lesson 8.1, which is the average value of a function on an interval. So if you're not sure how to do average values, that's the lesson to go look at. Look at the description for the link to that lesson. Part C. 
For this question, it is asking if the rate is increasing or decreasing. So when I see these words right here, something is increasing or decreasing if its derivative is positive or negative. So what I'm looking for is, whoops, negative, not ned. So I'm looking for the derivative of something. So I wanna know, is the rate increasing or decreasing? Now, sometimes students think, well, this already is a rate of change, so I, I don't have to take the derivative. This is asking if the rate is increasing or decreasing. It is not asking if the number of vehicles is increasing or decreasing, the actual rate. So what we wanna do is figure out what is A prime, and then we wanna evaluate it at T equals one. So A prime of one, what does that equal? So I grab my calculator, and in this instance, I'm gonna go math eight, math option number eight. That'll give me my derivative with respect to X, bring up my Y variables, Y variables function, function one, and then I'm evaluating it at the number one. So boom, there's my answer. Drag it over here. So I get 148.947. Truncated and rounded is the same. Now, do I have to know exactly what number this is? Really, I just need to know if it's positive or negative, but they will often give you points based on did you find the actual value of the first derivative so that you could evaluate it. Now let's justify, let's give a reason for our answer. So the way I'm gonna say this is the rate is increasing at 6 a.m., or in other words, at t equals one, I'm gonna put that in parentheses, because the first derivative of the rate at time one is greater than zero. All right, so there's my justification to prove this answer. So that's what the things that they're gonna be looking for. Did you do that? All right, now, if you don't know where that one's coming from, this is from lesson 4.1 for uh, the AP Calculus course. What's 4.1 called? That one's interpreting the derivative in context. It's just what's the meaning of the derivative? And that helps you with something's increasing or decreasing. All right, last problem. So now we're gonna say that a line starts to form if the rate of cars is more than 400 per hour. So the number of vehicles in line, this gets a little bit tricky. Number of vehicles in line from some A to four, so from time something to time four, is given by this weird thing. So this is the number of vehicles in line on the interval something to, to, to four, well, something to T, where A is the time when a line first begins to form. To the nearest whole number, find the greatest number of vehicles in line at the toll plaza in the time interval from A to four, justify. So one thing, this gets a little confusing, so I, I start to look for key words here, and that is greatest number. And that tells me that is looking for a maximum. So I have to think through what I've learned in calculus that helps me find a maximum value. So what's the maximum number of vehicles? Well, this is the number of vehicles. And so I'm going to take the maximum number of vehicles and take its derivative, n prime of t, and I will set that thing equal to zero. So, and then that will help me find some, uh, some candidates for some critical points for if they're max or mins. So let's use, uh, what's the derivative of this? So the derivative of an integral is just that t gets plugged in. So it's going to be a of t minus 400. Now notice the 400 didn't go away. The 400 is still there because I took the derivative of an integral. Okay, that's lesson 6.4 right there. What I just did was lesson 6.4, dealing with the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we wanna say, when does that thing equal zero? Or in other words, when is A of t equal 400? All right, so now what I can do is figure out when does this thing equal 400? Let's go back to my calculator. And I'm gonna graph it, but if you'll notice here, what are my window? I'm gonna look at my window. I'm going from zero to five because I only care about the first five hours. And then notice my y max, I said 800. Why did I do that? I did 800 because I saw this 450 right here. So I thought, well, sign, the biggest sign is gonna be as a one, 450 times one. So I just decided to say 800, I, uh, just to go past it, put it somewhere in the middle. And then I graph it, and there's my curve for the, the rate at which the cars are changing. Now I'm gonna graph y equals 400, and there we go. So what I wanna do is figure out when did these two things equal each other? So I'm gonna do a quick little uh, calculate the intersection points. And there's my first one. I'm gonna drag it over here. I'll deal with that in just a minute. Now let's get my second point. There it is. All right, so I've got two points here. I've got that they are going to cross. One of them's at 1.469, blah, blah, blah. And the other one is at 3.59. Now you don't wanna round these answers. So what I'm going to do is give these some labels. This one is actually my A. If you remember from the problem, the problem stated 
that when when a is above 400 so this blue is when a is a and it's when it's above the red line so it's going to go from a to four so the top is or i mean excuse me the a is we'll say a is approximately 1.4 six nine three seven one six and i'm doing this so that now instead of me ever having to write this whole number out again i can just refer to it as in my work as the letter a and then my letter b would be approximately i'm going to go with b is going to be assigned to this number 3.5977133 okay now i can get rid of my graphs here so what I have is possibilities of having maxes. Now I can think about that graph and I know which one it's gonna be, but what you're gonna to have to do most likely, I'm, I'm again, I haven't seen a scoring guide, but nearly positive this is what they would have you do. And that is, I'm gonna use a candidacy test where they, I have the candidates for all of the possibilities of having the largest number. So my candidates are, I'm gonna make a quick little chart. I have T values and I have N of T values. So my first T value is going to be A. That's this end, This A is the end point. I'm also going to have the other end point, which is four. And then the one in the middle is going to be the letter B. So these are my three points that I'm checking. And I'm plugging it into N of T right here as my candidates to figure out which one is going to be the largest. So from here, you can take your calculator. And there's a couple different ways of doing this. What I'm going to do you could make a table of values if you wanted to do it that way, or you could just say the integral. And I'm probably going to save myself some time by storing that after I found the intersection, storing it in my calculator. And then I'm going to go to, uh, what was it? Yeah, in this case, it's just that first one's just going to be zero, right? Yeah, because it's going from A to A. Yeah, like there. It's going to go from A to A. Okay, so that first one's pretty easy. We'll just say this is zero. So then we can jump to going from A to B. So that one would be my 3.5, what was my number? Move this over, 3.5977133. Bring up my function that I plugged into y1, and then I have to minus 400, right? Is that what it looked like? A of x minus 400, yep. And that's all with respect to x. Hit enter, boom, 71.254. And then I'm gonna go from a to four. So all I have to do for this one is just bring up my last, the last thing I just did. So I'm just gonna hit second enter and that'll just bring it up. And then I just go back and change the upper limit to a four. 62.338. All right, so then now I can see what's the greatest number of vehicles in line. It's, it's this line right here. So the greatest number of vehicles is gonna be 71.254. You could probably, you, you can't say it's 72 vehicles. So you'd probably say it's 71 vehicles. Oh yes, yeah, so it does say nearest whole number nearest whole number. So 71 vehicles in line. That's the maximum. And I could probably say something like by the candidates test. There we go. And where's the candidates test? When did we learn that? Candidates test was in lesson 5.5. So this part D had two separate lessons that we covered from earlier this year. Okay, that's everything. Hopefully this made some sense for you as you're either reviewing what you did from that exam or you're just practicing to get ready for future exams.